What in the world? Clons are worth 7,000, 8,000, 9,000? <gasps> I knew it. The Clons doubled in price. If I don't buy this, somebody else will, and then it'll be worth $10,000 next year. Well, I guess I'm gonna sell mine for a sweet profit and buy some guitars. Anyway, what guitar will I buy today? Will it be gold? Will it be green? Will it be blue? Will buy it be a green one? Buy a blue one. Buy a turquoise buy one. Buy a yellow one. Buy a red one. Buy a white one. Buy a black. Buy a silver one. What color guitar am I gonna get? Will it be yellow? Will it be green? Will buy a green it one. Buy a blue be? One. Buy a yellow one. What is that? I feel like my gear is talking to me. Klon, did you hear that? I heard it too. What the frick was that? Knock, knock, Neo. Ah. I'm coming. It's coming from behind that door. I'm gonna go check it out. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. Open up. In 1994, an overdrive pedal would be released into the wild that would change guitar gear history forever, ushering in a new boon in the boutique guitar pedal building landscape. This product is the Centaur Professional Overdrive, built by the Boston-based company Klon Siberia. Before it became the most expensive and sought-after guitar pedal known to man, it was merely a solution to a problem Bill Finnegan discovered in his guitar tone. You see, he liked the sound of the TS9 distortion, but the all-important mid-range frequency. That was the real deal he was compelled to address. Guarding his circuit wizardry with black epoxy, Finnegan created what would grow into a cold phenomenon to guitar players across the globe for decades to come. Only 8,000 Klon Centaurs were ever built, and after various dweebs across the internet have spread its lore and repeated its name across the ethos, the Klon Centaur is not only valuable, it's become one of the most popular pedals to recreate. And that brings us to our special friend here, the Ghost Drive. A creation built by the famed guitar gear manufacturer Stu Mack. This is the finished product of a pedal kit that you're actually able to put together yourself. It can be built by anyone, from electronics DIY tinkerers to even beginners as well. As you've heard and will continue to hear, it is well worth the price tag in case you don't have an extra, I don't know, $7,000 lying around. So thank you to Stu Mac for providing this incredibly faithful reproduction of a legendary unit that has enhanced my own and so many others' lives, and for sponsoring this video. You can check out a link to the Ghost Drive pedal kit in the description down below. Well, I suppose all that's left to do here is to really dig in and find out just how close these two pedals really are. We'll start with the most famous use of the Klon, where the sweet spot of the circuit is engaged. It's here where an already slightly overdriven amp can achieve its true potential of the gnarliest of growls or the most piercing of screeches, all the while enjoying a hearty mid-range that seems to just melt away most undesirable guitar frequencies. This is my favorite way to set a Klon, and let's see how the Ghost Drive measures up.
almost identical. Wow. I hope you're wearing headphones because I have no doubt you'll have trouble distinguishing between these two guitar pedals. Now let's explore the gain knob, shall we? The great thing about the gain of a Klon is it doesn't become unusable in certain areas. In fact, the dime gain sound is actually incredibly luscious and as we've identified is full of glorious clear mid-range. <laughs> two sound exactly the same. Wow! Let's hear how that same dimed gain setting sounds with the neck pickup of a guitar. It's like I'm hearing double. Wow. wow. Now another way I use a Klon Centaur is as a traditional boost, with the gain set below that sweet spot I mentioned. We're not actually engaging the clipping of the circuit in nearly the same way, so you're getting a bit of mid-range and top-end color, but as we push up the output, we also receive a volume boost. <laughs> The Ghost Drive is knocking it out of the park. Wow. Now the treble knob with the Klon Centaur is a point of great nuance, and a few centimeters can mean the difference in a great guitar tone and a perfect guitar tone. Now, I've had the treble knob on my preferred setting throughout this video, but now I'll show you how the treble knob can make for various shades of color in your guitar tone library. <laughs> Of course, this demonstration wouldn't be complete without firing up a single coil rig to see how the two pedals compare that way. <laughs> I can tell the ghost drive is as spot on a clone replica as I've come across and as you know I'm a historian of that sweet sweet tone. Well I hope you learned something in today's program. I'd like to thank Stumag for their sponsorship and if you would like to be haunted by your own ghost drive be sure to check out the link in the description and thank you for watching. Until next time. Keep shredding. 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 Keep shredding.